She's from, she works with me at the, uh, some of them are Yes, okay, perfect. Okay, we'll check her off our list. Wait, do I have, yeah, I have a list. list? Who's the name? Rhea. Rhea Dusa, I think is her last name. Oh, yeah. Kachin. Do you have a list? I don't have the list. Rhea? Rhea, R, R, R. Once again, to the folks on Zoom, thanks so much for being there. We're just waiting uh, for a few more people to arrive, I think. And uh, as soon as we get the signal that we can get going, we'll get started. We appreciate your time. Thanks for being here. Nice to see some familiar names and faces in the Zoom. Twelve oh five. Should we get started? Are we going to keep Aviva? I don't think we should keep her on the app. Okay. You can ask. Um, my friend can talk about that. Okay. If you want. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Brent, did you have any? There is a uh, card and a piece of paper from the Public Health Table. Could you just pass one of these to my two people as they walk? Maybe while we're waiting to get going, I'll just um, quickly say to the folks who are in the space here with us in person, we do have a photographer here with us today from University Communication Services. Um, Lisa's here with us. And perhaps if you do not want to be photographed, uh, you could let us know by raising your hand now. Perhaps, Lisa, you're able to see folks' hands, if anybody has a hand raised that they do not want to be photographed during this workshop session, just let us know or you can speak to Lisa directly, who you'll see in the space with a nice camera. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for being here. We're gonna get started. Um, I'm Saskia Kolchak. This is Lindsay Rogers, who's gonna take us off with uh, with our workshop today. Oh yeah. Okay, great. Just give me a second here. 
We have um, ASL interpretation as well available for this meeting. So I will just add that spotlight. Hi. All right, well, officially, bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. Welcome online and in person to Concordia University's fourth space. Thank you so much for joining us for Affecting Machines, Mapping Women's Contributions to AI. I will be passing the floor to our colleague in the Applied AI Institute and the Affecting Machines workshop organizers in just a minute. Uh, but first, we'd like to let you know that we are streaming to YouTube live from Force Space, which is located on unceded indigenous lands here in Jage, Montreal. And we'd like to extend our gratitude to the Kanyankahaga Nation, who are the caretakers for the lands and waters on which we are meeting, for their teachings about the earth and our relations. Fourth space is Concordia's knowledge mobilization public space. We work with faculty, students, and staff to activate ongoing research projects and initiatives with the goal of co-creating knowledge and building community. And we do so by producing these daily hybrid events that are free and open to all. So once again, welcome online and in person. We're so glad that you could join us. And with that, I'll pass the floor to Lindsay Rogers. Welcome, Lindsay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for coming. So this is the first event that um, Affecting Machines is putting on. Affecting Machines is a working group um, that is affiliated with the Applied AI Institute. Uh, in, earlier in the spring, the Institute was awarded um, a research grant to think through how to respond to gender equity in computing and AI. Um, the proposed research plan enacted a community-based action research, so we worked closely with uh, a team of researchers, some of whom are here, and uh, community representatives to establish uh, various trajectories for how the research would proceed. Um, there are multiple projects that we're working on. Uh, one is for an upcoming workshop on August 22nd, which you're also welcome to attend, which will look over a set of normative principles and research guidelines to ensure that AI research is more um, socially responsive and equitable. This Today, we're going to launch a set of, of trading cards that will be discussed. We are also working on um, guidelines connected to recruiting and uh, more inclusive recruitment and onboarding practices. So before we begin, begin, I also just want to take a moment to thank all of the community consultants with whom we've worked uh, from the early stages, to brainstorming how this uh, project would proceed and offering feedback every step of the way. So they've been an important part. So thanks very much. Uh, I know some of you are here today. Um, and with that, I'll invite Rachel to start introducing um, the workshop that we're here for today. Hello. Can you everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Am I speaking as working? Mm -hmm. Hi there. Sorry, just for the interpreter on Zoom, I'm not able to hear the speaker very clearly. Uh, they're quite low. Yeah, the mic is. Could you pass me that mic? Yeah. I think it's this one's on now. Yes. Can you hear me okay. Yeah, the other Thanks one was so being a bit um, finicky. It wasn't yet. It was going on and off, but now we're good. I have a mic. This one was just going on and off weirdly, but we're good. Hello, welcome. I'm Rachel. I'll be telling you a little bit more about uh, the trading card deck that we prepared today, uh, what the project is all about. So uh, women, girls, and gender diverse people tend to self-select out of STEM, especially uh, the subfield of related to computer sciences during their education, uh, even when they excel in subjects that would direct them towards those paths. And so addressing this issue, our project focuses on materials that open up conceptions of what and who are involved in AI related fields, uh, particularly the computer sciences, helping underrepresented uh, students imagine themselves as capable contributing forces within this space. Uh, so in response to these gender equity issues, we've developed a set of 20 role model trading cards, which we'll be working with today. Each card features a figure that has made major contributions and interventions in AI related fields. In the wide body, oop, there's my tag. I'm very uh, flaily. All right. In the wide body of social science research, 
Positive role models have been found to help young girls' identification with STEM fields and their belief that they have a future in the industry. At the same time, there is a lack of role models for them to look up to. But what exactly makes a role model? What makes a person inspiring? By showcasing these figures, we don't just want to create new high pressure ideals. We want to provide examples that inspire them to be more themselves, that show them what's possible and what can be achieved uh, in being themselves. And importantly, we want to highlight a range of skills, work, perspectives, and paths. We want to highlight how computer sciences have been built on and continue to require things like problem solving, critical thinking, social awareness, and teamwork, and how people, there's my name tag, <laughs> and how people who think differently uh, or come from different backgrounds have and continue to shape and disrupt the field in and beyond our Canadian context. We might have this narrow idea of what makes a programmer and what that work involves. We might imagine a solitary logic brain cisgender man working with technology in a detached way with lines of code and lexicons of jargon bolstering their expert position. But these conceptions are both limited and limiting. They restrict what we think is possible and how we might imagine ourselves fitting in. And they're not even all that accurate in depicting what it takes to be a skilled coder or data scientist, for example. But for, say, a high school or CGEP student, that imaginary has a powerful directing force. Seeing yourself represented, having a role model to look towards, um, opens things up. And so intervening at this early entry point, uh, entry point into STEM is fundamental because we need different thinkers, perspectives, and approaches shaping the technologies that are simultaneously shaping the worlds in which we live. Of course, there are barriers and biases that underrepresented and underserved people's face when they make their way through these masculinized fields, and these can't be overlooked. But we're developing this card deck as a starting point, an early intervention, and a necessarily partial, incomplete component of a multifaceted, ongoing solution. And so the cards are multi-purpose and open-ended, where their efficacy isn't just in all the information they contain, uh, but in the discussions and further digging that they open up. Originally, we've imagined these cards as pedagogical materials uh, given to teachers and used in classrooms from elementary school to high school, and even in higher education settings as well. But that's not to say that they wouldn't also work in settings outside of school too. We've imagined using the cards in guess who games, games involving collaborative storytelling and team building, ordering and sorting games. We've imagined students looking for more information on the figure featured in their favorite card, maybe coming across an article the figure wrote or a short video explainer about them. We've imagined all these potentials in consulting our community partners and our broader, broader research team. And now in this workshop, we're expanding the project out to the broader community. In the next couple of hours, we'll be testing out, playing with, and discussing the cards together. Saskia will now take us through a more detailed overview of what you can expect from this workshop. Wonderful. Thank you, Rachel. I got my, oh, got I got my mic. lapel mic. Wow. So, okay, great. So, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, thank you, Rachel. Um, so, this is Rachel. This is Aviva. And I'm Saskia. We're the team behind um, uh, that developed the cards that we're going to be playing with today. Um, and yeah, as Rachel mentioned, I'm just going to take you through what you can expect from our workshop today. So you've heard from us in terms of our introductions, um, contextualizing the project and the cards. Um, and now that you've heard all about the cards, uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, get to know the cards themselves and one another. So um, we're going to be doing this on both uh, all of our activities actually today are going to be both um, on Zoom and in person. So Rachel and Aviva are going to take our in-person participants through the icebreaker activity, and I'm going to be um, facilitating for our Zoom participants. Um, so once we do the icebreaker, um, where you will have the chance to, to learn more um, about the different figures, um, you're going to be breaking into smaller groups and working together on a generative storytelling activity. Um, so this is your chance to sort of imagine beyond the scope of what's mentioned on the cards um, and sort of uh, 
collaboratively uh, work on what we really envisioned as like a weaving, um, which was a, a returning motif um, that emerged when we started developing these cards. So um, once we get, go through that, that'll last about 30 minutes, um, we have a break, um, at which point you'll be free to enjoy some snacks. Um, and then as we come back, um, and I think as Rachel emphasized quite clearly, uh, this is like an iterative project. We do not have, the, the sort of the forays you're gonna be doing today with the cards are not, don't represent a, a, like an end point, um, but rather we really want the feedback that comes from your participation, from playing with the cards, from the context that you come from, um, to think about how these cards could be used, um, the type of settings and, um, and applications they might have. So that's gonna kind of close us out. Um, and yeah, that's, I guess that's our schedule for the day. Um, I guess what I'll do now is I'll offer for our in-person our in-person participants a quick explanation of the icebreaker you're going to be doing, and then um, I'll shift over to uh, address our Zoom participants and uh, leave our in-person people in the um, capable hands of Aviva and Rachel. So um, as you enter today for our in-person participants, you were given a sheet uh, of paper and uh, a trading card or a role model card. Uh, what we ask you to do now is uh, go through your prompts on your handout and try to identify um, different figures uh, that have the listed uh, attributes. So, and in doing so, try to get to know some of your fellow participants. Um, and I'm gonna be doing sort of the same on Zoom. Uh, if you need a writing implement, we can provide you with one. Um, and so yeah, uh, please take it away. Okay. Great, so everyone can hear me. Uh, that's basically what you're doing. You can get up, mingle with each other, really ask people questions like, do you have this card? Do you have that card? And I can hand out uh, these uh, pencil crayons um, in case anybody needs one. Um, and then we can just get started and you can do your thing and chat with each other and really have fun with it. It's very open-ended. There's no right way to do this. Do you wanna add anything, Aviva? Um, as you can see, your cards at the top have a little shape um, at the top corner. We're going to be kind of projecting the meaning of that because that um, will help with some of the questions. Um, yeah, each each um, figure is um, has been ascribed a different um, affinity, so a different kind of role that they um, have taken within the history of computer science. Um, and yeah, and so you can. Yeah, um, feel free to get up and mingle. Um, you'll really need to kind of move around the room to get all of the um, all of the answers. Okay, so for the Zoom participants, yeah. Okay, so hi everyone. Sorry, I just hear myself in the room. Is it off or? Oh, I did. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, so for all of our Zoom participants today, we're going to be going through sort of the same, um, a different version of the same activity um, where you're going to get to know one another and our role models. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I guess it would help. If you feel comfortable, you can... Um, you can turn your video on. Uh, what I'd like to do is, I'm so sorry, hold on just a moment. Sorry about that. So um, 
I just wanted to be able to see who I all had there, and I wasn't uh, able to see that with the the pinned uh, the pinned context. Um, so, um, Alex, to answer your question, um, what we did for this initial run of cards um, was settle on uh, a set of twenty role models um, who were part of this initial run of cards. What we envision is that our website, which I'm going to share with you right now, um, it has all of the figures that we've done in this initial run. Um, and we envision this as a resource um, that will allow participants and people who use the cards, if they don't have a physical version of the cards, but reference the website uh, for using the cards to contribute their own role models um, give, with the formats that we've provided. So um, what we can do in this initial uh, icebreaker, I see there's about, it's about 20 people. So this is, it's a pretty big group here. Um, if we'd like, we can create some breakout rooms or just initially we can go through this together because it's um, a pretty uh, cooperative uh, game where that will allow us to engage with the cards and one another. So I'm providing you with a link right here, um, the Google Docs link, um, where you should all be able to edit uh, the, see and edit the document. So as I mentioned to our in-person participants, there's different um, prompts uh, that allow you to engage with the cards. So you're going to see that we have um, various affinities, um, occupations, eras in which our figures lived, um, and fun, fun facts and uh, such as quotes and information tidbits about their lives. Um, what we'd like to do is have you go through um, the website where you can see all the cards. You'll see that on one side, there's an image of them. Um, and the other side is the uh, information, uh, biographical information, and um, where you can fill in uh, the answer to these prompts. Um, ideally you try not to repeat the figures because I, I think this was, uh, if I did it correctly, it was designed so that we can do it without repeating. Um, and that will allow you to explore as many figures as possible. Um, if you want to sort of, as you go through, um, signal who you've added, that would be great. If you want to have fun with it by, you know, um, choosing a, a special font color or um, special font to distinguish your contribution on this sheet, that's also great. Um, but really just this initial chance is to figure out more about who these role models are and, um, you know, the pertinent information about them. And if you're having, um, if you're interested in like a breakdown of what the affinities mean, I know I, I didn't sort of explain that super robustly. We have um, an index at the top of the, the card deck um, on the site here. And so you can see, we sort of conceptualized our figures in five broad categories based on the type of contributions they made um, to the field. Um, and so those are our five categories there, the pioneers, entrepreneurs, makers, disruptors, and thinkers. Okay, I see we've got some contributions in the document. Unfortunately, I can't tell who any of you are uh, specifically, but I can see that our anonymous walrus has uh, added Kathy O'Neill under somebody who has the disruptor affinity. Thank you for adding that in. Um, So I see Tristan and Juliet, you have your cameras on. So maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna put you guys on the spot. 
but but um have you have you found anyone who are, are you working on a specific question oh i see emma also has her camera on is there anybody who you're trying to find or who you've added so far who you've I identified just found the one who liked math since childhood. oh okay yeah someone yeah. else yeah, excellent. That was Katherine Johnson, if I'm correct. And Katherine Johnson, for, for those who might not know, um, was one of the historical figures who inspired the Hidden Figures um, uh, book and movie. And so in developing uh, this deck, we thought it was really important uh, to highlight her contribution as a pioneer in the field. Um, It looks like we're making really good progress. I feel like we're almost complete. And then maybe we can like go through as a group and um, once it's complete, sort of review our answers. People can volunteer uh, if they contributed those answers and sort of say maybe what they found out, if they made any connections between um, that answer and other answers discovered any overlaps between our figures. Okay, I think it's turning into a race to find somebody who lived during the 1990s. Oh, because I think it's looking like most everyone else is complete. So if, uh, if any figure has to appear at most once, uh that's another game starting then that's true that's actually a great point tristan so maybe we can yeah maybe we can go through and see because i think we might all right everyone we're at the halfway mark um so we're going to be handing out some more cards to diversify the mix and you can keep talking amongst yourselves so it looks like the folks in the room are also sort of yeah. Uh... Thank you. It looks like they are also reaching uh, sort of the the limit of how many people they've found. So it looks like we're we have lots of answers here. Yeah. We gotta see if there's somebody who doesn't appear. That's kind of a hard way to, it's kind of hard to reverse engineer that, but I'm noticing some new, yep, some new contributions to who is a mathematician. If we start from the top, if it's not distracting for folks. Um, so if somebody who has the disruptor affinity, I see we've had, we have three contributions to the disruptor affinity, Kathy O'Neill, Judith St. Jude Milhan, and uh, Aisha Bow. Um, those are, so uh, yeah, those are all great examples. It seems like to me that uh, St. Jude Milhan is, she's getting a lot of, uh, a lot of 
coverage in this. Um, and that makes me super happy. She was one of the cards that I helped research and develop myself. Um, she's a really interesting figure. You might notice that her, um, her photo, um, she was actually really hard to find a photo of. And the photo that we've uh, included on the card is actually of her mugshot um, from when she was arrested for protesting for civil rights in Montgomery, Alabama in 1965. Um, so uh, that is uh, in an incredible sort of, it, it shows uh, the type of figure she was. Uh, she had a lifelong dedication to hacking, to um, the cypherpunk movement um, and uh, I think is somebody who's a really a, a great example of what we think of as a disruptor, somebody who wasn't you know, satisfied with the status quo and um, sought to change things um, through her engagement with technology. Um, and I think we double up because with her because one of her famous quotes that we've included here, which I loved and was, was I think really a central um, uh, like centrally highlighted in one of the obituaries I read of, of her was that her rallying cry was that girls need modems, um, which is, uh, which I love. Um, so who else? It looks like we've really covered a lot of ground here. This is great. Um, has anyone identified somebody who is missing that's not on the sheet? Um, that hasn't been answered, like provided as an answer yet. I think Stephanie Shirley is not there. Ooh, that's okay. That's a great one. Cause I would off the top of my head categorize her if I'm not mistaken under the entrepreneur affinity, um, which would be a great way to, I, and I think that's how we really thought about her contribution, but there's maybe some other, um, some other categories that we can put her under. The Enyaq 6 too, maybe? Mm, mm. Yeah, I haven't seen them on there. Unless one of them was there under their name. And Carol Show is not there either. Carol Shaw, yeah, that's true. Yeah, Carol Shaw was, she was, um, a really interesting contribution. So I should also say, like, as part of this project, the um, the the trading cards, like, our vision for the the finished website, um, where your the cards are going to be one aspect of the resources available, is understanding these figures on a um on a timeline, um, and so uh, and sort of contextualizing these contributions, providing more you know information, and on that timeline, Carol Shaw is a really uh, interesting figure in that she was really one of the earliest um, uh, co contributors, female contributors to video game design. Um, and in this sort of evolution of, of, con of like contributions to computing, um, she played a really interesting role in this trajectory. And I think we're gonna do our best to highlight that sort of, that which is implied this type of this evolution and timeline is implied by these cards but i don't think it's necessarily as clear um and so we're really uh excited about providing that more contextualized resource with the the finalized website mm -hmm. yeah karen has pointed out that any of six were missing so I think they can be categorized under computer program. Or under the maker affinity. Yes. And I mean, arguably, I think, I don't think we did double, doubly categorize them, but I think they could undoubtedly be considered pioneers as well. So it looks like we're gonna, yeah. So it looks like 
Okay, so this has been amazing, y'all. We've gone through, it looks like everybody in the room is finishing up as well. So what we'll do, as I'm realizing that the in-room audio um, plays as we're on the Zoom as well, we're staying on Zoom to do our next activity. I think we're gonna break into breakout rooms um, in order to do it uh, because we're doing some collaborative storytelling. And then we're going to transition to the next activity. And so, in order to do that, I'm going to try to put you all in breakout rooms. We're going to do some collaborative storytelling with the figures that we've um, encountered. Um, and so uh, I'm going to provide you with another another collaborative document. I think my idea was that we we're going to use a, a jam board on uh, Google Drive. So uh, if you're not familiar with that, maybe this is an exciting chance to use a new digital resource. Um, but for the purposes of the next activity, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be engaging a little more uh, creatively and imaginatively with the figures that we've gotten to know through this first activity. So yeah, um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna explain while we're all together um, how the activity, the storytelling activity will run because I believe they're gonna start explaining it in the in the in person here in just a moment. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and share my screen. I'm supposed to stop other screen sharing. Oh, I don't wanna stop other screen sharing. So um, I'm gonna provide everyone again with a, a document you can view and uh, and contribute to. So the general storytelling activity was sort of um, emerged as an idea from one of our community partners during the development of uh, our workshop. Um, and okay, I'm gonna also bring this up on my screen so that I can see what everyone else is seeing. Um, and uh, it was suggested that this could be a really fun way to creatively uh, interact with the cards and with our figures. So this is this game is known um, by a few names. In one case, uh, uh, Exquisite Corpse, which was named by the Surrealists, the French Surrealist movement, um, but it's also a, a parlor game known as Consequences, in which um, players take turns contributing um portions to a story that we write together um and so i've provided an outline here um and what we're going to do is in in breakout rooms we're going to select two well it's going to be the the turn of whoever to select a role model and we're uh two role models and we're going to collaboratively write a story about them so we practiced this with our um our team yesterday and so this is a great example of how the uh how the uh story turned out and you can see we sort of color coded everyone's contribution and you can see how this uh this ended up so what we'll do is um so i'll, I'll read it through actually because so uh i think lindsay started us off yesterday and she picked the adjective persnickety um, and so we said persnickety and nita borg met lucky st jude milhan at the international space station to have a little sanka set um so anita borg said uh maybe the new anita borg institute headquarters should be at the international space station and st jude milhan said yeah that would be great we could see all the corruption back on earth from here hey by the way could you cover my space bail uh anita borg opened her suitcase of money labeled breaking case of feminist emergency to cover saint jude's bail saint jude threw on her ray-ban wayfarers and lit up a cigarette and thus the international space station became the new anita borg institute headquarters with saint jude milhan as chief operating officer always with sunglasses on and the world gave a thundering round of applause so this was a rather, you know, playful and a little bit silly engagement with these prompts. Um, but uh, based on what we learned together, uh, we can go through and try to um, take turns adding uh, contributions to these stories. So what I'll do um, is um, I'll place everyone in breakout rooms. Um, we're going to try to get even numbers of each. And then from there, I can add you to your respective jam boards and um, hopefully with amongst yourselves, I can assist you, but amongst yourselves, 
take turns uh, at answering each one of the prompts, um, and then we can sort of see what sort of story we write together. So give me just a moment, and I'm going to try to place everybody in um, even, uh, even breakout rooms. Okay, so I've just opened the rooms for everyone. Um, and if you could, by direct message, uh, indicate to me if anyone requires um, ASL interpretation, um, and I can ensure that our interpreter joins your room in order to do that for you. the table.
elevator and go to the sixth floor uh, if you need to use the bathroom. And then we'll be returning in 15 minutes for our discussion. Uh, and you can still like eat and snack when you're seated during discussion. So you don't need to eat super quick and finish that up. Great, thank you. Great, so yeah, Rachel was just noting for our Zoom participants that we're gonna take our break now um keep an eye on the time i think we'll cue you when there's 15 when we're close to the end of the break and when we return it's going to be sort of we're back together in the hybrid modality so our in-person participants as well as everyone on zoom will have a chance to give some feedback on the activities um and you know share your stories if you see fit um so please enjoy your break and we'll see you back here soon
We'll be concluding the break in five minutes and resuming our discussion then. So there's five minutes left of break.
It's 1.30, the break is over now, so if you can make your way back to the seats and we'll get things started for our discussion. And we'll be starting with our discussion momentarily in the next couple of minutes. Okay, welcome back everyone. Um, feel free to enjoy your snacks as this uh, discussion portion uh, goes on. Um, but yeah, I guess now we're gonna move into the phase that as we were sort of indicating earlier, um, a large part of this workshop for us was um, using the participant feedback um, and your experiences um, from our sort of our preliminary uh, activities here to get feedback on uh, how you might use the cards, how you found the cards, how the cards sort of acted as an intervention um, in your understanding of the history of AI and computing, um, and you know maybe just offer uh, an arena to share some of your you know creative outputs. So um, we've sort of given two broad categories of discussion question here. Um, so for both our in-person and Zoom participants, feel free to raise your hand. We'll bring over a mic for in-person participants. Um, and yeah, we want to sort of know how did the activities go for you, go for you, um, and yeah, how you might use these, uh, these cards or the, the resources more generally in the context in which you work, teach, learn, uh, et cetera. Does anyone like want to start us off? I know it's, it's hard to be the first person contributing in a discussion. Yes, please. Hi, I'm uh, Olivier from the library. I, I was, I'd like to riff off a conversation I overheard in the, in the queue for the food. Uh, maybe figures I'd like to see added to the deck would be um, women who've created uh, stories that employ technology. So we have a lot of scientists, a lot of the, you know, so um, I'm thinking of, you know, science, science fiction writers, movie directors, works of the imagination that allows us to understand the prospects and futures of AI. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, because that was something that I think in, we talked about imaginaries at the beginning, and um, for us, like like as sensitizing concepts or as as ways that young people understand um, this field. I think sci-fi and um, speculative fiction are so so important, and there's such a, a, an amazing body of, of feminist um, literature um, on the on these type of in these type of genres. I I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Um, I saw another hand over here. Uh, I already gave a, a list of uh, figures that I, I felt should be added to the deck. But I think the most important thing is how these, uh, these cards can be used to stimulate um, opinions and activities. And one way would, would certainly be to, to make some sort of board game, a board game where uh, people could advance in their career by choosing the right cards. If they collect the right set of attributes, they would have certain advantages, and then they would be able to discuss the projects. You know, this is how it's stimulative to discuss uh, projects in artificial uh, intelligence and scientific computing that they would, uh, how do you say, want to realize in the future. This uh, would address an audience 
anywhere between the age of eight to, I would say, even 22, uh, and allow people to, to develop. You know, I, I thought the activities that we had uh, here in these groups were, were, were indeed generative. And uh, yes, uh, did, I, uh, did I did I take some of these interventions into into my own hands? Well, yes, I, I actually created my own storyline while while we were exchanging. I, I want to multitask, so while we were uh, exchanging our personal experiences, I actually uh, created my own uh, narrative. So that, that's uh, that's how I would uh, actually deploy this strategy and how I would. Uh, how do you say make the cards most useful? The more cards, the more options, and the more pathways that an individual would have to developing uh, a work plan, a career plan, and as well uh, a, a vision for society. Thank you. What and on a good note, I. And sorry, just for the interpreter, I couldn't hear that last part. I heard on a good note, and then it kind of trailed off. So if you don't mind just repeating that last part. I, I said that it would be important to be able to have as many cards as possible so that uh, students and aspiring individuals would be able to trace uh, their own career paths, their own uh, how do you say, intellectual paths, as well as modeling uh, the ideal vision for society. And I, I thought that that was how I was going to end on a good note. Apparently, uh, it backfired. <laughs> Thank you. But you redeemed yourself. You. you said it again just as eloquently. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, the just when you speak into the mic it's good to speak into the mic so that the people on zoom and the interpreter can hear as well um yeah thank you so much i we're wondering how did the activities go how was it working with your teams i overheard uh a, one of the tables calling themselves team yellow um what were the kinds of things that came up when you were doing uh the activity how was it Hello there. Uh, hello from Team Yellow. Uh, my name is Bettina Fauger. I'm a, a grad student here in art education with an interest in STEAM. So this was, we had, I think we just had a really great group. Um, I think the icebreaker was already fantastic to get us all looking at the cards as well and getting to know each other and the cards. So when we got to the table, we were already primed to be creative together. I think a really important and interesting component that you created for our workshop experience, aside from the cards, were the creative prompts that shaped our storytelling. Because giving people a bunch of cards and say, make a story with this, it doesn't work. You need an enabling constraint, which you did nicely. We kind of veered off the steps a little bit because we had kind of movie ideas i as we were all brainstorming together when one person got stuck with what are they going to do next somebody else came up with a genius idea and it's just so delightful to see other people be brilliant at the table and i think it felt for me a bit like a writer's room in hollywood and we're so figuring out the next blockbuster movie with two amazing heroines at the helm of the story uh, i come from art ed so i'm already seeing uh storylines being plotted out and storyboards being drawn and we can make this into an ai animation afterwards so there's a lot of potential i think using this card deck and a, a creative structure that runs parallel to it which is how are we going to prompt people to use the cards and what you've done is it's very step by step i think you can maybe try in next iterations to be a little looser and maybe go with like they're getting to, I, I love the dialogue where we really had to imagine what the women are like and put characters and words into their mouth um i think we could focus more on that bit of exposition maybe give them an inciting incident in the story say it's so now a bomb goes off what do they do or something like that i think um designing the prompts these enabling constraints that go with your card deck is going to be really 
fun as well. And there's going to be a lot of different options to develop those. So I'm looking forward to how you iterate that part of the project along with the cards. Yay, Team Yellow. <laughs> On a positive note. Oh, yeah. I just want to say um, I love what you said about like the writer's room and the cinematic quality because I think I saw something similar happening in one of our Zoom rooms um, where there was a discussion of the Barbie movie and of like our figures working with uh, with Greta Gerwig. Um, I don't know, Juliet or anyone else who was in that group, if you have anything to add about that. But it seems like there was that that sort of organically emerging um, feel of this collaborative storytelling. Um, but yeah, does anyone on Zoom want to add about about how you experience that? You don't have to, but if you do feel so. Do you, do you want to go? Well, thank you very much. It was a wonderful experience. Um, and I think quite entertaining one also. Um, I have, we actually, we just discussed one thing uh, and I want quick feedback also. I just saw the website and um, Juliet was kind to share the link, um, the affecting machine. Uh, and I, I looked at different, you know, um, women that, we can see there and i just thought that i couldn't see any you know um women from the global south so i thought that why not to you know get someone from the global south and have uh, women of color i see that there are some women of color there but they are mostly uh, geographically located in um, the global north whereas we know that there are many women um, in tech who are working in the global south also so i think this is one thing that our group was discussing that perhaps having this equal racial equity as well as along with gender equity is something that could be uh, integrated one thing that our group actually discussed and we did is um, the outcome you know the consequence is very interesting of course we wanted uh, 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 more films made on you know women in tech and one of the consequence was that what will women bring to the table is the empathetic technological advancement and i think empathy is something that we think is needed when it comes to uh, technological advancement because while we are creating technology oftentimes we don't consider the empathy that is required for humans especially when we talk about ai you know um so yeah these were some of the thoughts it was a wonderful experience thank you very much guys i am actually taking notes of this because we can also use it for our future workshops so thank you julie do you want to add something please go ahead no um just the little story that we came up with was very fun we imagined that um who was this again? Judith uh, Mulan, Milan was going to the cinema with a person that um, you added, uh, who is called Sadia Muzaffar. And um, yeah, they had a conversation about how there should be more Barbies from the global south. <laughs> who are, yeah, and that Barbie herself should be a scientist. I think that's how this whole story started. So it was very fun. <laughs> Yes, thank you for summarizing the story because I didn't realize that most of the people do not know about her story. Yes. <laughs> so eventually we we were hoping that the two ladies would write a letter to the director. The director will invite them to a meeting where they would discuss for a future, you know, project, which would be specifically based on, you know, women in technology. And so in result of that, the world would say, wow, we need more women in technology to add, you know, empathy uh, to, to the techno technological advancement. Thank you, Juliet. I just missed that part. Oh, oh if you just want to wait for the mic and then it'll be good to add something. Thank you. Uh, the Barbie exhibition actually is here in, in Montreal, Cormont Royal, and maybe one could suggest, though, I, I actually know the family that actually uh, put that on display maybe uh, putting scientific personalities yeah. adding that to the collection would be a good idea that display has been on uh, for uh, i think 13 years now and uh, maybe it's time that it be modernized I, I i like i like your idea of the barbie scientist you know uh, she can still wear her heels but uh, perhaps she should have a microscope in hand Thank you. 
That is Barbie's whole thing is uh, showing people, look at all the things that you can do. And there's all sorts of different Barbies. So that's a great addition. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for uh, the feedback and the points uh, that you've made um, over our, our Zoom participants. Um, yeah, the Global South uh, uh, component was something that we discussed a lot. Um, the cards do skew very much towards like the English speaking Global North parts of the world uh, because of our situatedness uh, in uh, at Concordia, like in our Canadian context and what we had had access to with like the different histories that we were looking at. Um, and that's something that moving forward, we like basically everything you were saying were stuff that we were like, yes, 100%. So definitely thank you so much for that. And uh, on the note that you were, uh, the, to the point that you were making about um, the importance of empathy in developing tech and some of those characteristics. I have another question for the rest of the group if anybody wants to add. Um, it's also on the, the slide as well if you want to take a look. Uh, how has this workshop um, kind of changed or added to your perception of the AI field uh, and the role of gender within that? Was there anything that came up along those lines during your, uh, during your, the, during the activity? Any any conceptions that changed? Anything that changed when you came into the workshop versus where you are now? Okay, that's okay. Well, I I was really delighted to see how many women you were able to rustle up and i know that um you know th this is exactly the goal of your project i think the stereotypical computer programmer as you described in the introduction earlier on is really the you know why it's just meant cisgender male this is how the computer programmer is being sort of iconized everywhere and so th this set disrupts this preconceived notion, not just, uh, I, I also love that you're going back in history as well. So showing that timeline that it's computer programming is not a new thing. It has a history. Women were very involved during that time. And I think this is not in front of mind in sort of popular culture. And that needs, so you reprogramming our brains as well at the same time. Um, and I think that is, uh, that's been really successful. And with the when we did the um, icebreaker, I thought I knew a lot of women because I'm I'm doing like in my own work research about women in STEM, and uh, I discovered new faces, which was really delightful. And at first I wasn't sure why we we're doing trading cards, but now I feel like I really want to like steal those set cards of women where it's like I, I don't know who these people are i need to sneak this into my back pocket so i can look them up on wikipedia later so that's like on my personal level that was really delightful for me and it was actually tricky for us because there were so many people that we couldn't even get to like there were so many people that we couldn't include um yeah i saw there was another hand over there if you want to add yeah, thank, thanks for organizing this. That's uh, amazing work. Uh, yeah, I learned something, and uh, that thing is that the one that coined the term software engineer was a woman. So I didn't know that, and thanks for educating me. Yeah, that's a great example of something that like surprised you when you think you know the context. And yet, just to reiterate what, what Rachel said about sort of the scope of this, it's like all things in academia where you think that finding enough is going to be the hard thing and then it ends up being the task of like whittling down and, and making it fit within like sort of the, the, the constraints that you have ends up being the, um, the greater challenge. And so that's why we're so thankful that you're able to contribute and, and that this tool will be a bit um, open-ended and allow our participants um, who download the set of cards through the website to, to, um, yeah, to uh, add their own figures. Um, and so basically we have five minutes left of this discussion period, so we probably have time for one or two more contributions. Um, uh, as we're sort of on that 
you know, train of thought. Was there anything that surprised you, either within your own group experience of the activities, um, within your, you know, what you thought you knew about, about AI, about STEM fields, um, anything of that nature, or really any responses to any of the questions we have here? Hi, I'm Mitali, also Team Yellow. <laughs> and um, I really loved both of the activities. One of the things that I don't think anybody said yet, but was certainly an experience in Team Yellow, was how much thinking about or engaging with these different women's biographies inspired us to have conversations about ourselves and our relationship to AI and what we do in the present. And it's kind of like, it's like those conversation cards that you have and I can imagine in a in a tech related field it's like just a casual thing that you can have around and that that inspire different stories and connections even as we're talking we'd be like oh you know what I I used to code with COBOL or I like remember Y2K and you know like it brought back these different memories or how we've engaged with tech throughout it oh yeah and Nate I, I I can't even remember some of the NATO seventy two. <laughs> oh yeah, and maybe I'll pass it back so everybody else can find out about NATO seventy two. <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's. Ugh, am I remembering right? NATO seventy six. Natachka Netsvanova, who I think you should add to the pile. She was really a terror. Um, but uh, had designed some video software in the 80s and 90s. And then it was a bit like Kathy Acker as computer programmer. She kept blocking people from access to the software whenever they upset her on the message boards. <laughs> Just really, she like, and wrote in this bizarre prose about how she's like a dying sunflower and everyone else is a fascist and doesn't understand like, you know, the embodied allure of computation. Wonderful, I recommend her. Ada Lovelace also has some amazing quotations that are out there um, in, her, in her own notes about how she's destined for amazing things and how she's also like not dying sunflower in a field of like boring things, but along those lines and it's quite, it's quite wonderful. Uh, we have a couple minutes left of the discussion in case anyone has anything to add on that note. Uh, otherwise, I could maybe ask one last question. Oh, we have one more thing to add. Yay. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Um, no, no, I thought it was good. really interesting that you chose to put the NEX 6 all together on one card. And I, I guess one thing I've been thinking about, I'm a history librarian, so that's kind of, but um, I'm really interested in the connections between these women and kind of how, who, which of them worked together, which of them knew each other. And I think we were getting at that a little bit with the storytelling and like imagining kind of fabulous and whimsical connections that they might have had, but I wondered if there's a way to kind of uh, pull out those connections between them a little bit more. Yeah, like a six degrees of separation type like join and that's like something that I think we encountered in our research and like obviously we had a lot more time to sit with these figures and like dive deeper into their biographies but yeah creating those links and I think that's such and like I think the choice to to put the NEX six together was both like sort of a spatial concern but also a way to emphasize teamwork and that's what we wanted to sort of that was I think a theme that we kept returning to and looking at women's contributions to the field was they're deeply um, collaborative and that's why we wanted this like workshop to reflect that um, and I think that's an amazing suggestion of ways to sort of have participants have users of these cards try to explore connections that might not be super clear on like first pass yeah. oh yeah if you want you can add something no 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 worries it's all good I thought it might be an interesting idea to I think the, that I think the goal is for also for this to come off the cards and affect yeah. present. Yeah. Um, so I was just just in a small detail, but this could be expanded in the icebreaker activity instead of just um, answering the questions for the people on the cards, but also for the participants in the room, because I think um, I look around this room and I see a lot of women and, and everyone's been really uh, dynamic and wonderful to chat with. So I think to think of ourselves in the context of this lovely framework you've provided might actually start rolling the ball of, of th thinking in yourself in you know in a tradition as part of history um and and that is one small step towards kind of the ideas going beyond the cards and in into influencing the present 
in a very small way. I'm really glad that you added that. That's so lovely. And I think it goes back to the discussions that we were having about like what makes a role model instead of just being somebody that, you know, in this this distant person who's achieved all of these accolades, uh, a role model is really someone that enables you or gives you permission to be more yourself and to really strive for what you want to strive and seeing yourself in a position that can achieve certain things. So that element of being able to connect and, and folding uh, participants' personal experiences and thoughts and feelings and skills into the activities is a really, really good uh, addition. Uh, this feels like a nice segue into our concluding remarks uh, as well. So questions like, where do we go from here? Where can you find the cards? What's going on? Um, yeah, so the cards are going to be made available as you know these decks. We have the printed cards that you all played with. And for our in-person participants, we'll be giving you uh, each a deck of cards when you exit. Uh, for our Zoom participants, we still want to give you a thank you for, you know, uh, show our appreciation for tuning in wherever you are um, in the Zoom room. And so um, if you uh, flag Lindsay, you can shoot her uh, an email um, and you guys can coordinate a pickup for the cards at our office um, on one of the buildings in Concordia, on the Concordia campus. So you can email Lindsay and coordinate that pickup uh, so that you can get a deck of cards as well. Um, so we have the deck of cards. We also will be having a PDF um, of the cards on our website uh, so that people can download them for themselves and do a little DIY card deck. Part of this PDF uh, is all of the 20 role models that we featured, uh, the index card, and also a blank card template so that people can uh, add their own figures that they would like. And when you print this out, you can create your own deck in that way. And the cards are also going to be embedded on our website too in this like flip format. I understand for the Zoom participants, you were able to engage with that a bit. Um, and so, yeah, you can play with that in that way. Uh, and then connecting with the ENIAC 6, for example, um, how are these people connected? How did they find each other? I could answer this right now, I'll tell you later. But um, the last, the other component um, that's going to be on our website is a timeline um, with certain moments in this history that the different role models are connected with. So we're going to be teasing out some of that stuff like the ENIAC 6 and how they knew each other and what their contributions were and these different moments in history. So there's about you know certain moments there and they'll be linked with the cards too. So people in engaging with these cards can go on our website and um, have access to more resources in this kind of gathering and mapping uh, in that way. Um, and also, thank you so much for all of your contributions. This was really, really valuable uh, to see how the cards can be played out. We spent time you know, developing them, so it's great to have you actually working with them. Um, and we're going to be factoring in some of uh, the feedback that you gave, the comments, your experiences. We'll be incorporating that into the output that, that we deliver at the end of the month. Um, uh, and giving some examples of how people can use the cards and so on. Um, and then going from there, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to continue this in this more iterative way, adding things to the cards, um, to, and on our, on our website. Um, and yeah, so this is really not this final concrete thing, but an ongoing thing. Um, and we're going to be sending out a survey. So in case, you know, on your way home, or tomorrow or whatever, if you think of something that you wanted to say or if you weren't comfortable sharing with the group and you still want to share some feedback or some comments with us, um, you can include that in the survey that we'll be sending out mm -hmm. um, through Fourth Space, I believe. Um, I think that was it for yeah. all of the different next steps uh, for you guys, and I'll pass it on to Saskia yeah. to give the final, final, final <laughs> concluding all remarks. I, all really I have to say is thank you. Uh, so thank you again, uh, participants, for um, coming and working through um, our ideas uh, with us. Thank you, Lindsay, um, for uh, being a project leader throughout this summer um, and helping us to collaborate and develop the, this output that we got to share with you today. Um, thank you to our community partners who were invaluable in developing um, both the like outline of these cards, the way they might be used, and coming today and playing through them with us. 
And lastly, thank you to the crew at Fourth Space, Anna, Doug, everyone else. Um, this has been an amazing workshop. You've made everything run so smoothly. Um, and with that, I guess I'll just say we are back here next week. Uh, not us, but some of our colleagues on the Affecting Machines project um, will be here presenting the second workshop in our series, August 22nd from 12 to 2 p.m. So. Perfect. Uh, can I please ask for a round of applause? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. And if you have if you have further questions or just want to chat, we're, we're we'll here. be we'll be here. Yeah. Wonderful. Don't and uh, just a, a big shout out to TK as well. Thank you so much for the interpretation throughout. We appreciate you joining us in the space. Um, to all of you who have joined us in person or online, I'm reminding you that we live stream this event. So if you want to revisit any bit of the conversation, it's on Concordia University's Fourth Space YouTube channel. Please have a gander there or share with friends. Uh, we'll be closing up the Zoom space now. And once again, congratulations to the organizers for making this such an enjoyable afternoon for us all. Thanks, everyone. Have a great afternoon. Bye. We're going to cut out. I'm gonna... Oh, I'm going to get my notebook so I can write this down. What, what struck me is that you should also list the role models of these individuals, both the male oh, yeah. and I was